Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So alcohol is a great product to have in our shop. One big point, it's not as strong as the deglazer, so it might be a better option for a lot of us. But also, it's a very common product. Most likely, we have some in the medicine cabinet in our house. So let's go over six ways alcohol can be a big help to us in our shop. Well, but first off, let's start here. Which alcohol? After doing some good research online to try to figure out what's going to be the best alcohol for us to use in our shop, the one thing I am now is confused. Well, we're going to hit the high points, but one plus, I can now spell the word isopropyl. Anyway, let's start right here. So ethyl alcohol, this is fermented like citrus. This is what's going to be in our liquor, pleasant to the palate, natured, denatured alcohol, not pleasant to the palate. For purposes of taxes and public health reasons, this has a lot of additives to it. But basically, it's more of a solvent because it interacts with more materials. So right here, on our isopropyl, the isopropyl is a straight alcohol, pure alcohol. The isopropyl rubbing has some ingredients in it, has some additives, typically water. That's what we're going to see, say, at the doctor's office when we get a shop. Now, in all honesty, all three are going to work for us in our shop, but I tend to like the denatured. So let's step over to our main table because this is the biggest question we get about alcohol. Mold can be a big problem for leather and we get questions on this all the time, particularly from us leather crafters because we're not a production shop. We're not turning inventory quickly. So we roll up a hide, we leave it on our shelf for some time, we open that up and we've got small spots or streaks of mold. If we catch these early, they are not an issue. Well, the problem is, and I don't know if there's any science behind this, but over 40 years of being in the leather industry, a leather shop is one of the driest places I've been. Leather is a sponge for moisture. Well, there's our problem. If it sits, it's going to be a problem. Now, if we catch it early, we can knock this out. But if we don't, what's actually going to happen is that mold is going to push up on our top grain. We're going to get a pretty good sized blemish. Now, we could absolutely get rid of mold with a little soapy water. It's going to knock that out. Problem is, that's not knocking out the mold further in the leather, and it's going to continue to grow. So let's take some alcohol. Whether we've got a small spot or a streak, let's just daub that area with our alcohol. But let's make sure we get alcohol to wick through the hide. Now, again, if it's just a small spot, I've never had an issue with these with dye or top coat. But let's just catch it early. Keeping the tools in our shop clean is an absolute necessity, both for accuracy and durability. I love the deglazer. We've got a great video on this, but in my opinion, this is simply too strong. If we've got any kind of paint or a logo on our tools, that's going to take it off. So let's back down to our denatured alcohol. Now, great example right here. When we get our master tool, English point, round in, or oblong, it's going to have a protective coating on it. Well, let's see if our denatured alcohol will knock that off. Now, it took just a little bit of rubbing, but not much, maybe 8, 10 seconds. Well, there we go. That tool is clean and beautiful, and we can do that with so many of our tools. Most of us dye our projects, and it's usually not an issue, but we all have accidents with dye, and that can be a mess. Now, when we're dip dyeing, we can always use gloves, and usually I get no dye on me at all. But here's the problem. For any of us that have done some good dyeing, we know it's easy to get a small pinhole in the end of that glove. We take off that glove and we've got a finger that's a beautiful walnut or mahogany. Let's just add some top coat. It'll look fine. Actually, we're made out of leather and we, we will die just as well. So it's good to have a hand cleaner in our shop. Now the deglazer, simply too strong to use on our hands. I don't want to do that. So for a good cleaner, the isopropyl or the rubbing is going to do nicely. But also the materials we use when we're dying, these can actually get pretty rough. Now the deglazer, again we've got a video on that, really cleans these up. In fact, that was pretty rough. But how about the denatured? Let's try that and see how that works with cleaning out our dye bins. And just about a minute of rubbing, 
and half a paper towel, and that's actually not bad. I'm not worried about previous dye contaminating this dye or streaking onto our projects. But also these two, now I can clean my own hands, and it's a good alternative to the stronger deglazer. I think our pattern sheeting is one of the most helpful products we carry. Makes a great pattern, easy to mark, easy to cut, and it's durable. In fact, I use this for just about every pattern I make. But when we're designing a project, it's so easy to get a mark in the wrong place or the wrong dimension. Or more commonly, once we make this project, sometimes we need to back up and we need to correct or just fine tune our pattern. Well, that is not gonna come off. Deglazer takes it right off. But how about our denatured? Let's see how this works. And there we are, just like an eraser. That comes right off, and we are ready to mark that pattern again. This is our Poundo board, and it is a great material for cutting our leather. It allows our knife to sink in just a little bit below the surface. So on our leather, we get a very clean cut. Here's the problem. When these are new, or they've been in our shop for a while, this can actually rub off on the face of our projects. I've had this happen several times. So how about let's clean this, see what comes off of it. Look at that. Absolutely, that is going to rub off on our project, and it's going to destroy it. So let's clean our Poundo board when it's new or when we've been using it for a while. Let's just do our best to keep our projects as clean as we can. Another work surface in our shop that we have got to keep clean is our marble with projects. Typically on final assembly, we're flipping that project back and forth. I don't want anything rubbing off on the face of that project. But because of the nature of our marble, we never see things like glue, oil, wax, dye, top coat, antique, and every one of those can build up and then rub off on our project. So let's go with our denatured, keep our marble clean, and that's something we never worry about. The alcohol is a great substitute for the deglazer, and most likely we have some in our medicine cabinet. But the bigger point here, if we keep our work surfaces clean and we keep our tools clean, well, we are definitely going to see that in the outcome of our projects. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.